We want to welcome all of his glory nation from east to west to north to south to this happy Tuesday, two for Tuesday. Remember Tuesday, uh, we have macaroni and bear and cheese tonight with a simple as a child, our Bible study, and we will be in the book of Ezekiel tonight as well. Uh, today is December the 1st. Amazing that we are in the month of December already. The 15th of Kislev, the year 5781 on the Hebrew calendar. And it is glorious to bring on uh, Rachel Ham. Rachel, welcome to His Glory TV. God bless you. Thank, thank you so much. I am so excited to be here. Hey, it's a pleasure to have you. I, 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 don't, I hope you don't mind because uh, we let the Holy Spirit flow in uh, on His Glory TV, and I know He's coming. Um, I shared with you before we came on how God, and you said the same thing. You said uh, God is bringing His people together. Uh, this this close knit and never so much I noticed that than the last couple of days because I was asking you uh, how we got connected and then you you know you mentioned Amanda and um, but something popped up and it was the Holy Spirit it said she's she's up yeah, I can't remember what it said what the Holy Spirit said but it said she's of me you need you need to have her on yeah. and I and I think I told Lisa this and oh, lo and behold but Anna Kate yesterday texted me the same thing she said the Holy Spirit's leading led you to to come together so and we have awesome. mutual we have mutual friends too it's amazing uh mm -hmm. dr graves right yes you've interviewed dr graves and he sent me a text last night that said the holy spirit had me reach out to to me so god is just working this this the circle that is just it's incredible to see because this is not how the church has operated in the past. You know, the, always the competition in the church. And now you're seeing all of us come together for one purpose, and that's the glory of God. Yeah, the, the lack of competition has made my heart so happy because both in the church and in any kind of like social media or, or media in general, it's so fiercely competitive. Right. Uh, church against church, who has the bigger numbers? Um, media, you know, I got that interview. I'm not going to give you my contact info. <laughs> Just even with social media influencer type things, you know, it's super, super fierce, competitive stuff that you see. And what I've experienced with people like you, Chris McDonald, Amanda Grace, Anna Kate, Dr. Graves, um, there's just this, I, I, it like gives me the chills even thinking about it because there's this sweet, encouraging spirit with no competition. Right. Um, I actually got an email from someone who said, every time I watch you, you're telling me to watch this person, this person, and this person. <laughs> and I watch them and they're saying, you should really watch her, her, him and her. Yeah. You guys are all so um, affirming and holding each other up. And they were saying, this is, this is really beautiful. We're so encouraged by this. And I, I feel the same way. I just love what's happening. It's sweet. And I pray that it continues and I pray that it just grows and, and just gets better and better. Oh, it's all to the glory of God because these interactions uh, that the, the, the knit is getting closer and closer and closer is all from the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, I don't, I don't have the Holy Spirit telling me you, that person has to come on. She's she's of me. It's only maybe happened three or four times. And wow. I remember you came out of nowhere. I mean, literally got something popped up on one of my phones or devices and and boom. Yeah. The same thing happened to Dr. Graves. Dr. Graves, uh, I didn't know who Dr. Graves was, and um, he, it, it came on, and the Holy Spirit says, he's of me. you got to bring him on, too. Yeah. And uh, it's great. It's great to see. It is great to see. And that, it, that's exciting to me, too, like when you say that the Holy Spirit put on, on your heart to have me on, because I love how God goes before us and makes a way, and he's the ultimate networker, right? Like, mm -hmm. he, he connects us, and he, he does what we can't do. He opens doors we can't open for ourselves. Exactly. So I love that. That's so, like, so what's, so what's, you said you had a dream last night. You, you want to share in the dream? Yeah, I do. So, um, so dreams are metaphorical. So sometimes, and I won't go into all what the actual dream was. I'll more just give the interpretation of the dream right. uh, rather than going through and explaining what each thing might be a metaphor for. Um, so basically uh, in the dream, George Stephanopoulos was, he was exposed publicly for, um, 
it was actually something kind of racist. It's like where he had pointed out this person was an Obama supporter because they were black. And the person got very offended and said, you know, I'm not an Obama, Obama supporter. And I don't understand why you would assume I was other than, of course, it's just because I am black. That's why you're saying it. And it was public. And he was like on screen and, and humiliated in this moment. And it like led to this downfall for him. So I'm not sure if if George Stephanopoulos, if it's literally about him or if it's metaphorical for um, for news anchors being publicly like exposed in a sudden moment and then having a downfall. So I'm not sure if it's him or or just media in general. And then the same thing happened with um, Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg was coming into Fresno, California to film a documentary And I was like seeing the documentary he was filming and I was hearing the voiceover and I turned to someone and said, Steven Spielberg is doing a documentary about Fresno, California. How far has he fallen? Like, you know, from what he would normally do down to, it was like some little local person had hired him to come film this because that was the level he was at now. Wow. I knew there had been a huge fall for him. So again, I don't know if it's him literally or if it's uh, metaphorical for high level people in Hollywood. And then the next scene was a news reporter talking about this huge group of doctors who had been told they were going to be paid for something. It wasn't clear what it was. I knew it was socialist medicine was part of the equation. And it was like, if you agree to this, then we'll pay you all this money. And they had agreed to it. And then they didn't get paid the money. And so they were mad. And so they were exposing things in retaliation. So it was like something was getting ready to come out in the medical community that was going to expose um, like br- a form of bribery, right. basically. And I knew it was connected to Obamacare. Mm. And then the fourth scene was a store that was, this, again, high level, really, really expensive. Um, it, there were purses like like Gucci and there was all these just like high level brand purses and they were saying that this company had had come in and filmed their purses and then had made knockoff purses of the real thing. And then it switched to a, an expensive jewelry store. And they were saying the same thing, that these people had come in, filmed the, their jewelry and then made knockoffs. And I knew and it was this news organization and they were exposing corruption that had happened with these certain um, what would be considered like prestigious high level businesses. Yeah. And so I thought. So you look at the four things, it was media, Hollywood, medical community, and business world, that there was getting ready to be this exposure of fraud, of bribery, of um, just bad things, basically. So I woke up and I was very excited and thought, okay, good. You know, we this is something we've known is coming. It's come, I think, on a low level, but definitely there needs to be more. And... Um, so it's just something to be praying into. And I think it's just encouraging because I feel like God was showing me that this is this is getting ready to happen. Yes. So he, he gave me a prophetic word um, probably two years ago about the seven pillars, uh, man, mm. man, the man's idol of the seven pillars of society. And, you know, those were all the groups that you talked about, plus the church is being uh, one of them as well, that they would all come down in uh, great shame and exposure and then out of that will come a remnant, a new type of Hollywood, a new, uh, a new on fire church, uh, a new way of doing business, a new media uh, that would be giving him the glory. And I think, I think we're seeing that right before our very eyes. And it's very, uh, the, your, your dream happened to be on the night before, uh, I don't know if you've heard this yet or not, but uh, Project Veritas is supposed to release a video today at seven o'clock taping Zucker at CNN. (laughs) Yeah, I'm so excited to see it. Someone sent it to me and and, and when they they sent it, I said, oh my goodness, I had a dream last night. Maybe it's connected to this. That's why I thought, oh, I thought it was about George Stephanopoulos, but maybe it was media in general because yeah, I can't wait to see this. Well, I know George Stephanopoulos has some some skeletons in his closet that will come out. Uh, I I assume when all this comes out, it will come out. But yeah, uh, yeah the, so the Project Veritas thing is going to be interesting because uh, I heard it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, mm-hmm. I was a former director at AT&T, so I know how AT&T operates. And AT&T is one of those medias that are, you can't be trusted right now. And they're mm-hmm. all tied together. It's, it's absolutely yeah. amazing how the Wizard of Oz, is, is they're pulling back the, the curtain uh, yeah. right before our very eyes. 
So good. Absolutely I mean, amazing. I've been waiting for this for so long. I'm just, I'm so excited to see it actually happening. I was telling my son the other day, I feel like we are living in the most exciting time. Exactly. It's, it, there's never a dull moment. I'm so excited. I love excitement. So I personally am like eating this up, loving it. I have, two, I have two sons that I say the same thing to. This is the greatest mm-hmm. time to be alive. And they look at me like I'm crazy. Dad, do you realize what we've gone through in 2020? My youngest yeah. one now gets it. And I believe my oldest one is starting to get it because with all these distractions uh, that are out of our way, it's more time to focus in on how is this true? How is there a way out of this? And the only way out of this is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he's the center of all this. And and that's what he told me in those seven pillars. When those seven pillars came down of mountains of man's idol, that was part of the great harvest, the, the, the great awakening uh, that we are uh, on the precipice of right now. And it's truly the greatest time to be alive. This is so exciting to be alive. There's so many people that are, oh, look at the elections and oh, look at the, the, the turmoil that's going on. But once God puts the light on this exposure, we're gonna have the greatest. We're gonna have the greatest revival in the history of the world. Yes, and it's gonna be beautiful. That's why he's got to be, have people like you, and Amanda, and Dr. Graves, and all these people come together and give up self for His glory, so that we could be a part of bringing in the lost. Because that's what it's all about: is bringing people to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I actually had a dream about um, what was happening right now to prepare us for revival. Besides the obvious stuff of COVID and and just the hardships that are causing people to maybe realize they need help beyond what they can do for themselves, right? Um, I just I had this dream that my next door neighbor was was very distraught about there was like one thing after another that she was very distraught about, and then she was she was going to what she used to go to like pre COVID to get help, and there was no help, and then she would go to the next thing the next issue, and then she'd go to try to get help for that, and what used to work wouldn't work. And it happened over and over. I mean, there were like it's like eight different things that she did that that didn't work. And when I woke up, the Lord said, "This is what is happening right now. This is what I'm allow allowing to happen. The whole world who who those that don't know the Lord, um, those that are still of the world, they are they're in great turmoil. They don't feel like it's the most exciting time to right. be alive. We do because we're tapped into the Lord. We right. are hearing. We are knowing. We are seeing ahead." Um, we have his peace, we have his joy in the middle of everything happening and they don't. And so it's easy to take, take that for granted, but, but the Lord was showing me that he was allowing people to really, in a way to be suffering and to, to be trying to go to those old idols, go to those sources of comfort. And those things were failing them so miserably that they were coming to a point of desperation that was going to open them up to the gospel that was going to kick off revival. Amen. So I see that as we are enjoying our life and doing what we're doing, um, our neighbors to the left and to the right and all around are are really struggling. But that's okay. Sometimes the nest has to become uncomfortable right before the right. baby bird will fly. Yep. So sometimes it has to get worse before it gets better. But um, I'm really excited because I think we're just like right on the cusp of. And that's that's so key because we have to we have to be able to h- handle what is about to happen. Uh, with much love and support because there are going to be people that are going to be looking for answers. And the only answer, at, at, as your dream said, every door shut that we've tried to do in the past of our human nature, there's only one door, and that's Christ. And this yeah. is going to, and we have to be loved. And the church needs to be loved, just to surround ourselves with love, joy, peace, uh, mm-hmm. show them that during the midst of a battle or a one foot snowstorm, uh, that Christ has it and uh, light wins. Mm-hmm. So and the Lord allows every lesser love to fail out of his love for us. Everything else will fail Yeah. so that he's the only answer. He's- and that, that was in this dream when she got to the end of all those things, I said, you know, I have, I have problems with all those same things too, but this is what I've done. And I started talking to her about the Lord. And so, and it opened kind of, it, it it opened up the door for you to talk to her to, yeah. about the Lord. Uh, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, because people yeah. can't they can't run to sports anymore. They can't run to their favorite movies. They can't, I mean, God is really shutting doors to say, "Hey, <laughs> look at if you don't see me now, when will mm-hmm. you ever see me?" And um, that's where we have to be gentle and bring them in in love. Yeah, and I think it's really the remnant 
that has been in a good place through all of this. Mm -hmm. Even people that are still within a church system, I've seen struggle. Oh yeah. Because there's still, there's still some sort of, there's an undoing that has to take place in them, if that makes sense. Yeah. And you can, you, I don't know your background, but I'm, I'm sure you've gone through trials and tribulations to get to where you are today because God always takes us to the fire to, to get us ready for this time that we're in. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's interesting that you would say that. I'm reading through, um, I just started today reading through Luke. And in Luke 1, verse 80, it's a very long chapter. It said, John grew up and became strong in spirit. How do you become strong in spirit? You, you become strong in, in spirit by overcoming adversity, yeah. right? And then it, it said, and then he lived in the wilderness, well, the wilderness being a metaphor for lonely, hard times yep. until he began his public ministry to Israel. Public ministry ministry comes after long years of hard preparation. Yes. And I, I it's, it jumped out at me because I had watched your testimony. Yeah. And I have a somewhat similar uh, testimony. We at least had definitely crossover. And so I think it's so interesting because, and I know this is the same for Chris McDonald. I know it's the same for Amanda Grace, um, same for Dr. Graves. We all have had lots of hard, lonely wilderness preparation yep. to get to where we are. And hopefully all that long, hard preparation is what will help us um, stay in the place of humility yeah. as we move forward. And that's the key. And that's why he takes us out to the wilderness. He takes us out to the as a good father will takes us out to the woodshed so that he can, he can drain that self of us uh, so that we, we can be used for his purpose and glory. Because when this takes off and it's about ready, you can feel it's like a rocket ship, right? Just to explode. And we're like on the 10, nine, four, three, two, one, we're about at two. And uh, we have to be able to handle that because we're going to see signs and wonders. We'll be seeing uh, many people come to Christ and it's not of us. It's got to be of him. Uh, which mm -hmm. is is why he put us through the wilderness period. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. And, and the beautiful thing is, um, we'll talk about my testimony, because I, not for me, because I know my testimony, but I'm curious to hear of your testimony and how that over, over, uh, over, overcomes each other. Um, mm -hmm. But what's beautiful now is that the Lord has been telling me a lot lately that there's going to be joy. Joy is coming. Joy of the Lord will be seen because we, when we go through these trials and tribulations, uh, it's it's not fun. <laughs> There's not a lot of joy. Um, right. But what He's doing now I, is so great. Going back to uniting all of us together, you know, just being on this, this broadcast with you, I feel the Holy Spirit already, and just you can't help to be, but to be in a good mood when you're talking to somebody like you about the Lord. Uh, it's just, it's great. He's bringing all these people together so that we can pray for each other. We lift each other up and uh, do it for his purpose and his glory. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. I love it. So tell me about your testimony then. Yeah, well, so I'd seen, you know, as far as like some crossover with us, um, I had, when, in, when I had four sons. When my first son was born, I almost died. Wow. And I was very, very ill and was in ICU and I was intubated. They actually, while I was on the operating table for an emergency C-section, the anesthesiologist said, we're losing mom. I'm switching to saving baby, but I was conscious. So I could hear that. So it was terrible. And then he put a general block in, in me to just paralyze me to cut in quickly and take the baby out, which also paralyzed my lungs and I couldn't breathe or speak. And it was very traumatic mm -hmm. as you can imagine. And then they began to it, intubate me and then I was unconscious. And, um, so then I was in ICU after that and I had an encounter with either an angel or Jesus. I don't know which it, it kind of feels like Jesus, but, um, I don't know, it could be an angel too. And it was just a really wonderful, amazing experience. But then I still was just really ill and did, had a kind of a long, hard medical situation that was miserable. And then I also had post-traumatic stress on top of that because of what had happened with well, just lots of, lots of things about it were, were very traumatizing, but, um, but I know you also had a long, hard medical situation. Oh. oh yeah. And, and then also I went, I was taken to heaven, um, at one point, And I think you were also taken to heaven. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I wasn't actually taken to heaven. I was taken to 
the dimensionality of heaven. I didn't see heaven, but I felt heaven. I felt the light. I felt the just, un- uh, came, and the Holy Spirit just came down when I just said that. You can't put it in words, the unconditional beauty and love. Everything looked five, just in, incredibly clear. Music was clear. And just God's love, you just can't put it in words. It's just beautiful. Yeah, so same for me. It was like a room in heaven is what I'm guessing, but it was just solid light, warmth. Uh, The way that I've described it before is that I could feel the air molecules on my skin. Like you could feel the air. Like it was like the glory was tangible and and the the feeling and emotion of it was euphoria. Yeah. You know, it it was wonderful. And it was when I was really needing some healing. And that was an amazing situation actually, because... Uh, my grandmother was dying and her, she was Episcopalian. And at this point I was 20, let's see, how old was I? I think I was 20, 20 or 21. I can't remember. Um, and so she was Episcopalian. I had grown up church of Christ. Church of Christ was kind of like, we were kind of taught, like we're the only ones really going to heaven. Like, you know, yeah. it's one of those type of situations. And also the supernatural doesn't exist. The prophetic is not real. Right. Women cannot speak or lead. So this is problematic. I had a prophetic gift. I I was a leader. I had a strong personality. I was like, this is a bad, bad match. Um, So at this point, though, I'm still Church of Christ. I meet this Episcopalian priest who I at the time thought maybe wasn't saved because he was Episcopalian. I mean, I just thought, how can you be actually saved and be Episcopalian, which I'm embarrassed about now. But um, but in the process of my grandmother dying, we spent a lot of time around him because he really stayed at the hospital through the, the whole process. And he ended up asking me if I was depressed, which took me off guard because I was very depressed, but I wasn't speaking about that at all. And I, and I was doing a lot to, to, when I was with people to really try to act like I was fine. So I was like, how did you, like, I thought, how did he know that? You know? And so I said, well, my grandmother's dying. And he said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Like, is there a deep, sad, achy feeling in you all the time? And he described exactly what I was feeling. And so I said, yeah that there was. And he said, well, sometimes God allows me to um, work with him and work with people to facilitate healing for people. So could I come to your house with you and your husband and pray for you? And at at this point, I'm still kind of thinking like, I don't even know that you're saved. I don't, I'm just getting to know you. I had a lot of walls up. I felt kind of, I felt like I had prayed already a lot too. And like nothing had changed. So I felt a little like, what really, what good is this going to do? But he kept persisting. He was actually kind of annoying. Mm. Like he kept like, okay, let, well, let's just, let's just give it a try. Like, what do we have to lose? Right. And he, you know, he just kept pushing until finally I said, okay, he could come. So he came and um, he sat, he was gigantic. He was like six, six. And my husband sat across from me. And then father John is what he went by. And he was at the end of the table and I sat to his left And he said, okay, well, you know, let's just go ahead and and pray and see what God wants to do. And so he began praying for me. And that's when I was taken up into heaven. And I only heard like the first line or two of his prayer. And then I am gone and I am in this room. And um, it's just full of this golden, amazing light. Um, I felt like I was just kind of floating and felt very wonderful and euphoric and happy. And then I saw that that um, there was, it was kind of like I was in an igloo and there was an opening to the igloo and, and angels were coming in and going out and I was watching them. And as they would come in, they would take their place like on this, the wall of this space I was in. And I realized that I was completely surrounded by angels. Like wow. every, the walls were angels and I could see them like breathing and pulsating. And, and it was amazing. But then I had the thought if angels can come in and go out, then something that could harm me could come in. I just like had that thought because I have trauma, early childhood trauma from being in a satanic coven. At, that was a, it was a, it was a preschool, but it was actually a satanic coven. And so I had had I had at that point in my life had ongoing just fear, anxiety. Wow. Um, didn't you know? Never really could trust or didn't know who I could trust or whatever. So. Um, so I had the thought something that could harm me could come in if there's an opening. And as soon as I had that thought, it closed up so that not, that no one was coming in or out. And I remember thinking in that, in that time and space, how powerful are our thoughts? 
And that was something that the Lord then began at that point really working on me with about the, the things that we allow ourselves to think and the thoughts that we meditate on and, and the power of even the enemy, like sending fiery arrows of thoughts to us or um, just thoughts in general and that what thoughts lead to. And, and I felt like also that I knew that where, wherever I was, whether this was, I don't know, I, I didn't, I wasn't even trying to figure out where I was, honestly, in the, t- in the, in the situation, I was just enjoying it. I was just loving it. Yeah. Um, but I thought clearly I'm somewhere where my thoughts can be read also. And I knew that it was God reading my thoughts and responding to my thoughts. So um, I felt so safe, so wonderful when that closed up and I was just kind of floating in this golden light. And I think what was happening in that time was as father, father John was praying for me while I'm in this situation. And it felt like the air molecules that I kept, you know, saying I could feel them on my skin. It felt like they were going into me. I felt like it was like I was in the presence of God or in this glory realm where I was literally being healed by the, by the presence, by the light. Like it was, it was putting something into me that needed to come in in order to, to lift off this depression that I had dealt with for years at that point. So I'm in this space and I think, okay, it's already been several minutes. I should probably go back. I know that John and my husband Marshall are waiting for me. Um, so I, I should, I should go back. And I, and then I kind of like didn't want to, and then I, I could feel this nudging. I was like, okay, you need to go back. And so I open my eye. Suddenly I am back in my seat. I open my eyes and I'm looking down and the whole table is soaking wet. Just, I mean, just drenched. So the first thing I say is, oh my goodness, did I spill my water? And I look up and my husband's eyes were like as big as saucers and he was leaning forward, like staring at me. And he said, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm I'm great. I'm, I'm amazing. But did I spill my water? And he said, no, Rachel, those are your tears. He said, you've been sobbing for hours. And I couldn't, I mean, I could not if I didn't trust him as much as I did, I would have thought this person is lying to me. I just had the most wonderful experience I've ever had. And then he's saying I've been, and I also thought I was there for, I would guess two to three minutes. And he said, I'd been sobbing for hours. And I look at father John and he's just shaking his head and kind of going like this. And he said, would you like to tell us about what just happened for you? And I I tried to put into words what had just happened and, and then kept going back to what do you mean hours? And I looked over the clock and yeah, I'd been there for several hours, hours. They'd been sitting there with me for hours. And I thought it was two to three minutes. Um, so at that point, God really infused a measure of healing into me that was, for lack of a better way to say it, good enough to get me to, to the age and time where I could actually enter counseling and deal with the trauma that I'd had as a child that I had not acknowledged or told anyone about. So that experience in heaven or that room or, you know, whatever it was, um, really healed me enough to get me through Right. until I could go in and really deal with the, the, the specifics of what had happened and get freedom on another level, n- another level, which was amazing too. So that is so much like, I mean, it's different, but it's so much my, like my experience because when I was outside, I died twice. And mm-hmm. the second time I was above the doctors looking at the doctors and they were panicking. And I was like, Lord, I feel great. And I was in that, I wasn't in heaven, but I was uh, filled in his glory and his light because I was looking down at the doctors. And uh, I was like, why are they panicking? Why are they panicking? Because they're, come back, come back, come back. And he allowed me to come back. It was just there's nothing like that love that he gives you. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. So you mentioned yeah. that you saw an angel or, or Jesus. What was that like? Yeah, so that was interesting because that was while I was in ICU and I was unconscious and intubated the whole time I was in ICU. But later I mentioned that nice nurse who had come and stayed with me, who I had that conversation with. And I was, you know, I was trying to find it, find him. I wanted him to come back so I could thank him. And then found out that he didn't exist. And also I couldn't have had a conversation with someone. I was unconscious and intubated. So, so that's when I started realizing, oh yeah, he was like you know, all white and <laughs> had a beard and was kind of not like a nurse. And so I started realizing that it was 
Jesus or an angel. And basically he was telling me uh, that I wasn't going to die, that this wasn't the end. There was lots of good things ahead for me. Uh, He told me that my son, he told me how much he weighed and what he was doing right now, that he was getting a bath and that my husband was with him and everything was going just great. And just was very, he was giving me actual literal information, which was interesting because um, someone had tried to tell me that, oh yeah, you, you know, a lot of people that are unconscious in ICU, they have a lot of hallucinations. I'm yeah. like, no, yeah. no, no hallucination. No. First of all, the peace that came with this man, the joy, the peace, the encouragement, the comfort. I mean, I wasn't afraid at all. I was like, you were saying like, you know, that when you're up above, your body and people would think, Oh, that's scary. No, Mm -mm. it's not scary. Actually that God comforts you. And it was not scary. Um, and yeah, then they just gave me like information like about my son and, and things that were real. He gave me real information. And I think also like that that there was a calling on my son's life and that that was partially why there was such a battle over his birth. And so that that's ties to my son too. I didn't know this when my youngest son was born. I was in the, I was still in the corporate world. I was stranded in uh, in uh, Waterloo, Canada, which was it used to be BlackBerry the headquarters. I was in the wireless industry, and I missed my son's birth because he was two months old. And it's a good thing I did in a way because I, they had a hard time get, getting him out, um, and it, they they started to panic a little bit and. Um, but I go back to the prophetic word. I think it's in my testimony. It's one of my testimonies. But when I was going through my first trial and tribulation, the Lord spoke to me and he said, You're, uh, my grandfather had been dead uh, for many years. And I, I really loved my grandfather. We had this close connection. He said, your grandfather has seen Creed, which is my son. And mm. he, he's, he's proud of him. That was before my wife was even pregnant. <laughs> it was just absolutely amazing, and there's been more prophetic word that there is a, an anointing on creed, um, and that's exactly why. That's why Satan is trying to to to, to uh, get the child before it gets into the earth, because he yeah. knows what the plans God has. God's told me that many times. Yeah, Satan knows the plans I have for you, son. So buckle up because it's going to get rough. But you got me. You got a trump yeah. card. I'm I'm your trump card. Yes. So, yeah. well, that, that's amazing. That's a lot like what I experienced. And there's no question that that is yeah. because of the anointing. And another thing you said, which is the same thing that happened to me, you said that was enough to get you by at that time. People say that yeah. to me my, all the time. You died. I actually died three times. Uh, when I went back, I actually got listeria after the botulism. Yeah. So I went into the Cleveland Clinic and they were, they're just like, they're freaking out. How, how, you're the first one in the history of the Cleveland Clinic and the CDC to survive botulism, and now you got hysteria. They were like, you're a case study. They were getting excited. I was like, no, 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 fix me. Um, but then they went through my chart, and they were going through my chart, and they were going, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Did you know this happened, this happened? He said, they said, uh, the head of the infectious disease said, we lost you the first night, too. I said, I didn't, even, I didn't experience that one. Uh, so I actually died three times. Two, wow. two of them were uh, I was, was taken into the angelic realm, uh, to, to the heavenly realm. And you mentioned something, too, about time. We are outside of time and space. And that would, yeah. because when I saw my flashes of my life that were pictures that nobody ever took before, um, that, that, had to be, that had to be 20, 30 minutes. But I was not dead that long. Yeah. Time is so interesting when you're dealing with not this realm. I mean, it's, yeah, it's totally different. It helps me get it more. It helped me get like when, when, you know, what is it with God? A thousand days is like a a, one day. Yeah. One day and vice versa. Yeah. That's, that's how it felt. Right. Like, it's just like, there is no time. It's. Yeah. And you mentioned something else that your Holy spirit just hit me right here with um, that you, you, you feel and see and taste and smell, everything is like uh, being on steroids. It's, it's things that you've never experienced before. Everything is just so vibrant and yeah. it's just, it's absolutely amazing. But it yeah. sounds like you're similar to me in another way. I'll let you explain your side uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm the type that always tried to do it myself in life and God had to work me 
and, and mold me and take me to the wilderness because I was always trying to do it myself. You would think after two near-death experiences, seeing heaven and seeing Jesus at the foot of my bed, that I would the next day when I got out or whenever, it, it took a long time to recover, but I would get out and immediately get in the ministry. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. He had to take me again. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like the same thing happened yeah. to you. Yeah, and, and just lots of hardship and, yeah. and struggle and rejection. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that I'm at this point, I'm so thankful for it. You know, in the time you, you definitely don't want that or would not choose it. But I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way. It's like I, I wouldn't trade anything I've gone through because I see so much refining and so much good that's come from that. And also, I think that there's a a balance to the scales that happens where Mm -hmm. when the enemy has ravaged that much, and then when, especially when you go to the Lord and say, he has stolen from me, I want seven times what he's taken. I want to make him pay. There is a justice that comes that I don't know that I would have experienced all the amazing encounters with the Lord and miracles and, and things that I've experienced had I not had all that hardship attack near death, you know, just all the stuff. Yeah. And so I want to trade it. No, it's it, And that's just his way. Is, is you mentioned the wilderness. That's his way of getting us prepared through that wilderness period. I mean, it's not just a near death. Okay, that's enough, my son or daughter. Go get him. He's not sending you out until he's got you programmed uh, from him that to do what he is for his purpose and his glory because... Yeah. He's got to get the self out. And I was, as one thing I always say that I'm the same as the Apostle Paul. And people always cringe when you say, oh, you're the, you say you're the same as Apostle Paul. I'm the chief sinner as well. And I don't say that as a badge of courage, but I would be the least likely to pick to go into ministry. And it's because of his grace. It's because of, of his love. And he had to get rid of my, my ego, uh, which was so big, he probably couldn't fit through a door when I was in the corporate world. Mm. so and that's the times that we go through he's got to mold us and shape us and like you said when you look back at it i wouldn't trade anything i wouldn't trade anything i don't want to go through it again but right, I, wouldn't, right. I wouldn't trade it for anything because it it, it gets us to where uh, we're at today yeah did you see that jesus stood at the foot of your bed yes yep. okay i see Jesus. things were really so i i had just been to heaven the first time mm-hmm. and the lord brought me back and then my mom, my mother was getting these prophetic words and she would, my wife or my mom, whoever they, they took turns coming to see me in the ICU because I, I was on a ventilator. I, I couldn't talk and I was paralyzed a little bit uh, from the, from the botulism. So she was giving me prophetic words from the Lord and they started matching exactly what the Lord was downloading me. Cause when you're flat on your bed in the ICU, you don't have anything to do, but meditate on the Lord. Yeah. And um, so it was confirming. And then finally, I got enough guts in me and said, Lord, you just took me to heaven. You're telling me all these prophetic words that are getting confirmed. I'm, go- I'm, going, for the- I'm going for the big one. I want to see Jesus at the end of my bed. And before I could finish that thought, there he was. Hmm. And people ask me, what did he look like? I was so struck mm-hmm. by the light. And just the glory that radiated uh, from him. I had a hard time seeing what he looked like. But I knew yeah. it was him. Because I, yeah. asked, I asked the father for him. And there he was. I was like, wow. Uh, that, that's the quickest prayer I think I've ever got answered. Yeah. Seriously. That's yeah. awesome. I didn't ask. But it's, it was interesting that you said Jesus was at the foot of my bed. Because for me also, it was at the foot of my bed was this man. Um, and white. Talking. And a beard. Did he glow? Uh, you know, it w- it's interesting because I also didn't look at his face really. I could just see his that he had a beard, but I don't. I don't remember like from here up. Yeah. I just remember looking, seeing like his beard, and then fr- from his beard down, being in all white, um, and just me just feeling so good. That was just loving his presence and thinking this is the sweetest man I've ever met in my whole life. But again, at that point, I was thinking it was a nurse. So yeah, it was. I, I bet it was Jesus. Um, yeah. it's, it's absolutely amazing. I, I did get a little bit of a look at his face, 
And, you know, people would always ask me, what does he look like? And I'd see all these pictures of Jesus, and no, that wasn't him, that wasn't him, that was him. Mm -hmm. But do you remember, uh, this was years ago, uh, about the little boy that went to heaven? I can't remember. Heaven is Real, I think, is the name of the... Well, I think there was a a girl that God was working, the girl and the little boy together. I think his name was Colt, and she drew a picture of Jesus. Did you hear about that story? I did, yeah. The picture she drew of Jesus was the same Jesus I saw. Oh, I went, wow. When I saw that book, I was like, that's him. That's him. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe yeah. it. Yeah, that was a really cool, that picture. I know the picture you're talking about. I had it on my as my screensaver for quite a while on my phone. Um, but we saw that movie, Heaven is for Real, when the movie came out. Mm-hmm. And our youngest son, he's a seer, prophet. He sees in the spirit. And when we went to see that movie, I don't think we knew that about him yet. We might have, I don't remember exactly. It was right around the age where we were first learning it, maybe. Um, we were in the theater seeing it. He stood up. I, something had happened where they didn't believe, someone didn't believe the little boy. And our son stood up and yelled at the screen and said, He's telling the truth. You have to believe him. And he was so frustrated and angry. And, and now it makes a lot of sense because there was so much that God was showing him and that I think there was a, he was fearful that he wouldn't be believed and he knew this was true. And so that was kind of, fun. that's interesting. How, and scary. how old was your son when that happened? I don't remember. I'd have to check the year that the movie came out, but I want to see maybe four or five ish somewhere around there. So what other, what other, what other things does he see into? Because he, I'm assuming this is the same son that you went through the ICU with. Was that the no. same? No, it's a different son? That was my oldest son that I was in ICU with. This is my youngest son. Okay. Um, we have a 22-year-old, a 20-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 14-year-old. Okay. And the 14-year-old is the one who sees into the spirit and also has a prophetic gift. Well, no, I think he actually is a prophet. I think there's a difference. Yeah. Um, he he's he can't help but but be prophetic like what he does is prophetic i mean it's just very interesting the first time he was four when he first started telling me things before they happened and i was like how did you know that and he's like "Mm." you know so um so he was about four when when we started realizing that it seemed like he was a prophet when he was six is when we found out he could see in the spirit and um, he sees all kinds of stuff. I mean, he sees angels and demons. He sees light and dark on people. Um, he sees portals. He sees principalities sometimes. Like we'll be driving and he'll be like, whoa, there's this big, you know, wow. thing, spirit. Thing. So he doesn't, he hasn't always had the language for it. But when he says things like that, I'm like, it must be a principality. Or I don't yeah. know. There's something very, very large over the sky, like over a whole region or city. Um, sometimes I'll see colors like what, so I think a lot of people who are in new age or people who are drawn to new age are mm-hmm. seers mm-hmm. and the church tends to reject them. Yeah. Uh, I don't think the church has a frame of reference for it or has been taught, even though it's in scripture, they don't, they just, they reject, they reject it really. Yeah. I mean, I, most evangelical churches do. Right. So, um, so a lot of those people get rejected by the church and end up going towards the occult or new age. In fact, our son, who's the seer, he's adopted and his birth mom is also a seer. And she was put in a mental hospital when she was younger, when she talked about what she could see. And so, um, it's really sad. I I think that it's such an amazing gift. And so the enemies worked really hard to make people think they're crazy or drive them away from the church so that the occult can use their gift. Cause think about what the, what kind of asset is that for someone to be able to see very clearly, literally, what's what? Right. You're like I'll sense something, but then I'll ask him to confirm it and get get a literal confirmation of what I sensed. So it's it's an amazing gift. What was I saying? I don't know why I was saying that. Um, I can't remember. Oh, we're talking about what he sees. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, about about the new age. So a lot of new age people, you know, they'll talk about an aura. Oh, the, you have a, I don't know if anyone's right. ever told you yeah. before, because I've had new age people tell me, oh, you have such a beautiful aura. Yeah. You know? um, and we automatically assume, we, we, we are, the, what, when I say we, the Christian people in general tend to automatically think that's ridiculous, you know, or Ugh, they're like new age and that's weird. That's a real thing. Yes, it so is. So like my friend will say, 
what? Look at that person. They're glowing. I see, you know, I see this light radiating from them and, or a color, like I see blue all around them. So I think that we've been quick to, when a new age person says something like that, assume it's ridiculous. And it's not, they actually are really seeing, Yeah. they're really seeing things, Bob. They probably are a very spiritually gifted person who's been hijacked by darkness. Yeah, that's unfortunate that the church has done that. But I, we, I, we're living in Joel too. That's your son is fitting in that age group. My son is thirteen. This is going to be the the age group that God is going to be using uh, for signs and wonders and and seeing things and and, and just miracles like we haven't seen uh, ever. Wow. It's it's an incredible time to be alive. But wow. I'm going to go back to uh, my the the person who baptized me in the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost was Perry Stone. Perry Stone did that. Interesting. Yeah. It's just okay. you know, how God puts people together. And when he baptized me in the Holy Spirit, there was, there was a shock that went wrong. I was the only one he touched, and he went whoo, going, going. He, fl- he flew back. And his eyes, like you said, your husband's, they were like saucers. This is Perry Stone. He baptized people in the Spirit all the time. Yeah. And that, that pulled him back. But the reason I bring up Perry Stone is um, he actually had a medical doctor come on and talk about that the heart has a central nervous system that it can identify what we're talking about the good the, the good and the bad in the corporate world i always used to brag because it was me that when i get in a meeting with somebody i would know if they're a good person to do business with or not well i thought yeah. that was me <laughs> no that was just a gift that god was was honing from our central nervous system of the of the heart it's amazing wow. so med- medical medical has proven, and Perry has a whole study on this, I can't remember what the name of it is, but that the heart actually has a central nervous system like our brain does. Hmm. And it can, it, can, it can tell. It can tell good. Also, the gut does. Like they say your, your literal gut is like, they call it the second brain. Really? Because when you, when you say you have a gut feeling, that's a literal thing. That's a literal physical thing. Or like for me, like if I, if I am praying about something, trying to discern I'll have like a calm come over my gut when it's of the Lord, or I'll have just like a an uneasy tension, acid kind of feeling in my literal gut if it's not the Lord. Really, I've never had that happen before. That's interesting. I wonder if that how that ties to the the medical study. I, I would be curious of that. You know, yeah. we, we speak about praying in the Spirit. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, people have uh, poo pooed that for many years. Uh, you had you know, certain denominations that that you know that's not of today, which Biblically, it is. We have to re- reshow them. But um, Penn, University of Pennsylvania proved that. Did you hear about that study on the neuro-linguistic programming on the front of the lobe of the, of the brain? No, tell me about it. Yeah, so University of Pennsylvania, I think it was one of those, I gotcha. They're trying to get people to say, oh, they pray, they, they, pray, uh, they, they pray in tongues or they pray in, the, uh, I call it praying in the spirit. Uh, they're mm-hmm. making this stuff up. There's this gobbledygook. And yeah. um, so they, they put, the, I guess, anytime we have a thought through our mind, it hits the front lobe of our brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they tested it, all these people, and then they had one person that they didn't test. Overwhelming proof to show that the people who were really speaking in the spirit language, the language was bypassing that frontal lobe. It was not coming from them. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Proving um, that the people are praying out to the Lord. Well, and also, I bet if they did a study on the results physically from praying in tongues, like Dutch Sheets has a testimony about how his wife had a tumor and he felt like God wanted to heal her instead of getting it done medically. And so mm-hmm. he asked the doctor for one month to pray for healing. And then in one month, if she wasn't healed, they would come back to the doctor. And so he asked the Lord, like, how, what is the strategy here? Like, do we, do we just command healing? Like, what do we do to get her healed? And the Lord said, pray in tongues for one hour every day. Wow. And so he did. And the tumor com- was completely gone after one month. So I wondered like, if they did a study of us praying in tongues, what's happening in our body as we are praying in tongues? Yeah, that would be, that'd be interesting. Uh, this study was just on the frontal low because they were, I think they were trying to, I think it was an I gotcha, trying to mock the church from that, but a boomerang yeah. back. This was probably six months to a year ago. Um, and Amy Coney Barrett has talked about praying in tongues. Has she really? Part of what they were making fun of her about. They were just over the top uh, mocking this group that she was a part of. 
Did you hear about that? Oh, I didn't know that. That group, that group is charismatic that she was yeah. part of? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. That's part of why they were making so much fun of her is because she said that she prays in tongues. And that within this small group that she was a part of, that that's, I think, where she had learned how to pray in tongues or something about the connection between the group and tongues. And so they were just railing against her for that. But I was so excited thinking, oh, my goodness, we have someone being put on the Supreme Court who prays in tongues. That's a very, very valuable thing to have. That's huge. The Holy Spirit just came down and confirmed that, too. Um, being a Catholic, most people, the Catholic Church is, is, is another one of these seven pillars. There's going to be a huge scandal come out in the Catholic yeah. Church. Yeah. And there's going to be many Catholics that are going to, you know, not know what to do with themselves. Um, yeah. And that's where we have to, sh- yeah, that's where we show love and bring, in, bring them in. But most yeah. people don't realize that the, the fastest a portion of the Catholic Church that's growing eight times faster than the regular Catholic Church is charismatic. They pray in the, they pray in the spirit. They believe that the the Bible is the literal infallible word of God. Uh, mm-hmm. It's amazing, and she sounds like she fits in that uh, obviously into that camp. Yeah, isn't that amazing? It I is mean, amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> you no, know, I know I know you do a lot of political stuff and talk about political. I love political stuff. I almost was a political science major in college. Oh, really? I always just loved history and politics and um, pray for the president constantly have dreams about him constantly. Um, but one of the dreams I had was that I, it was right after the election and we were in a skybox at a big like football game arena. I'd never saw the game. I never saw it like, down to the field, but it was just up in one of those sky boxes. And I was with my son Ezekiel and president Trump came over to us and he just had this huge smile on his face. I mean, just like just pure joy. And he said hello to me and I said, hello, I'd like to introduce my son Ezekiel to you because I know you want to hear from the prophets. And I, so I introduced them so that he could prophesy to the president. And I shared that dream. And I also have t- told Amanda that I think Amanda is going to be one of the, the prophets that's introduced to the president. But um, I shared that dream about my son and someone wrote to me and said, that's, that was, that's literal. There are, pro- there are prophets only God knows who, but there are prophets around the country. Maybe we even know some of them. Maybe Amanda's one of them. Maybe my son's one of them. Maybe Mark Taylor. I don't know. I don't know who, but that are going to be introduced to the president. And, you know, because I'd also been publicly talking about his, the people that are around him, the pastoral team. I can't tell you how sick I felt when I saw who some of them were. Yeah. And I don't have anything personally against them. I knew it was not me. Like I just, I saw them and I literally was like, <gasps> I think I even gasped out loud like that when I saw him because yep. it was like this, the Lord that quickened me that like they are not good. Yep. And I had had a dream about the spiritual advisors around President Trump not being good and needing to be removed. So I'd come on and I didn't even know who they were. Like I literally did not even look up names at that point, just had released a dream on Instagram, I think that you know that we need to be praying for whoever's around the president spiritually to be removed he needs new people we need to pray that people the true prophets people who really have the heart of god are brought into his his council and then later is when i saw who some of them were and kind of gasped and um but when i said that dream about introducing my son to president trump someone wrote me and said that is the lord told me that's literal that is not that was not metaphorical yeah, and that there's going to come a, ch- a time. So I'm really excited that that I, I don't know if it's happened yet. I, maybe it already even has happened, or that it's coming. That that he is going to bring true prophets into his into his circle or to to prophesy to him. And I can country- I, I can tell you from two two perspectives, uh, which is unique about his glory, is that we get military intelligence and we get spiritual intelligence and i tell you not a hundred percent of the time i'd take the spiritual intelligence over the military intelligence yep. but with that said i have i know people around not directly but are close enough to the president's prayer team that mm-hmm. they have acknowledged from a secular pr- perspective who they are and they need to change it and um amanda's name i sent up through them i told mm-hmm. amanda this uh, and I, I know they're, they are seriously looking at her and others. I don't know who they are. Um, 
but spiritually too is uh, he does need that. I've heard that from many many people who have had prophetic word that the, that President Trump needs it now more than ever, and wow. I think you're going to see that happen real soon, real soon. How awesome is that? It is. Well, it felt like that like President Trump is craving it. Yeah, like it's not that that it's going to be brought to him in spite of him maybe not valuing it. It's like I felt like he he was aching and craving for to hear from God and to bring people who could hear from God to him. So I think he's going to be very open to it. If again, if it's already happened or if it's getting ready to happen or whatever, I think that his heart is to hear from the prophets. Yeah. You know, what's really cool. Uh, Mike Lindell came on a couple months ago and, and gave his, he gave a two hour testimony on his glory. And he was just talking about how glory God is. We were talking, I'm not sure if this made it on the show or not, but He's he said he's going to run for governor in Minnesota. I, I think next but he year. Was but I can't place it. Who's that? My, the My Pillow guy. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And um, he said what he wants to do, and this matches the spiritual realm. I've to, I've heard many people hear the same thing, that they would do a campaign or a rally, and then at the end of the campaign or the rally, it would turn into a spiritual revival. Hmm. That's absolutely wow. amazing. Can you think about just you know a, a Trump rally of fifty thousand people? He leaves. Yeah. You start with a prayer. He leaves, you, you, and all of a sudden you get somebody come out praying in the spirit, praying to them, and it turns into a revival. <laughs> How great would that well, be? When you looked at President Trump's rallies, like in the air airport hangars, you know, and all that stuff that was happening, it felt like it was a spiritual it revival did. meeting. Yeah, it did. Like. I mean, I know it was political, but yeah. like, it, like my spirit felt like that's spiritual was happening right there. It just needed at the end, once he leaves, to have the right man or woman of God come up and say, all right, now let's, let's give glory to God and, and, and have, a, you know, have a, uh, a call, a call out to people. And yeah. That's, wow. Can you think of it? That never, that's never happened in our, uh, my lifetime. Uh, yeah, talking about I, something like that. A rally into a revival. That's his plan. <laughs> I love it. It's beautiful. It. It's absolutely and he's beautiful. he's in Minnesota, you said? Yeah, he lives in Minnesota, uh, so he's going to run for governor of Minnesota. And that's part of the election fraud, too. I, I remember him telling me, he goes, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, and he wouldn't say this in, unless it, it, he was 100% sure, that President mm-hmm. Trump is going to win the state of Minnesota. Because mm-hmm. he was the head of the campaign for President Trump in Minnesota, Mike Lindell was. Oh, and he okay. assured that he was gonna win and then he didn't win. Well, now we find out with the Dominion software uh, and the true raw data that came back from um, the, the uh, special forces that he did win Minnesota and he won California, according to that raw data. So yeah. Mike was right. Yeah, I actually, right before the uh, January 1st 2020, I had a dream that it was election night and I heard a commentator say, um, I I was seeing like a map above my head and each state was a different color. And then I heard a commentator say, we've never seen anything like this. They're calling it the red wave. And then every state started turning over until the whole map was red. And I, I know that's pretty far fetched. I mean, even at the time, I'm like, that's, that just feels impossible. I mean, it feels like, you know, a, a miracle would be required to make every state red. But I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked I wouldn't if either. we went into every single state and looked into the software instead of just the ones that are essential. Yeah. I kind of, I'm a very justice oriented person. So I'm kind of like, I want every state to be audited. I want to look at the software of every single state and find out what the result was, not just the ones that are essential for you know, outcome determinant, as they keep saying. Yeah. Well, we so, know that Dominion software was in, what, 28 states? Um, mm-hmm. So we know those 20 state, 28 states were impacted, at least with the algorithms. But there's two other whistleblowers that have come forward of, of bad generals um, that I believe are meeting with the Department of Justice today. One of them came on his glory uh, a year ago and blew wow. the whistle on how this software can be manipulated for an election. Uh, so there's not just the Dominion, there's at least two other forms of software that they used in other states as well. So it probably is in every state, just the algorithms. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yesterday I was watching you and Amanda talk about some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And when you guys were going through the story of Esther and all that. Yeah. 
and she was talking about Haman and you said now, now Haman, and if you can't talk about it, that's fine. But you said now Haman was what position? And she said, second in charge. Mm -hmm. And you said, (laughs) okay, so that would be like vice president. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if you've seen that. I, and I mean, probably you haven't, but I've, I've very publicly have said, I don't trust number two in charge. Uh, you know, that gut feeling thing I was telling you about. Um, I just, I keep putting that out and people have gotten very mad at me because yeah. they're like, he's a good person. Man. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like I, again, this is not me personally. I don't, I'm not trying to be rude against him. I'm just telling you, my gut says something is not right. So when you pointed that out to Amanda about nailing down, who would that be in this situation? I wondered if possibly we had some similar crossover feelings. Did you think that that was a hint? (laughs) I I did feel like it was a hint. I was hoping it was because that's what I said. I've gotten a lot of crap for it. Yeah, I I have too because I I, I brought some stuff up about uh, him in the past. I've always prayed that, you know, no matter what we've done in our lives, we can repent. Um, ask for forgiveness. That's how great Jesus is. So, you know, no matter what happened to these people, uh, they they still have time to repent. And that's what we need to pray for. Justice Mm -hmm. is of the Lord. We want to give grace and repent, uh, even though uh, it's hard to do. Um, Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't know the true story uh, about him. And um, I wish I could say more. The truth will come out about this. Good. Okay, good. But... uh, there's something to the gut, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm going to get a lot of hate for that because I, I, uh, I, I knew when I did it with Amanda, I, I went too far. And I was like, oh, Holy Spirit, you should have pulled me back a little bit. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know that you did. I was really, really glad when I saw it. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I wonder if he's thinking the same thing I felt because I've talked about it on shows on YouTube. I've talked about I don't trust him. Something's not right, you guys. I don't. I know it seems right, but there's a discernment thing inside of me just saying something isn't right. And I've had, I've had both. I mean, I've had people be like, you know, get mad at me or whatever, but then I've had other people say, I feel the same way. Yeah. So, well, we're not called to be po- popular. Um, you know, we're right. called to tell what the Lord and the Lord hasn't told me to say the name or say anything about it. So I haven't said anything about it, but he's, mm-hmm. he has been uh, pushing me closer to that. I always pray in the spirit before we go live and, there's a couple times in, in, in a man that we were texting back and forth last night afterwards where it looked like I was about ready to say something and the Holy Spirit went, mm, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. <laughs> not yeah. yet, not yet. And anyway, that's what we have to do. We have to be obedient. Uh, it, it's, mm-hmm. We're not trying to, t- trying to be the news and try to rush ahead of the news. Uh, just let it play out. Trust God. And uh, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter. We pray, we, we pray for repentance and we pray. Uh, that light wins and light will win. And absolutely, yeah. Because there's some yep. things that have that came up yesterday that I've heard more about today. Uh, if you saw the show about um, the the special forces going in and grabbing the server, yes. yeah, yeah, I didn't uh, see that yesterday. I haven't heard an update though. What yeah, I've got more intel in today uh, about that, and it would be easy just to say this is what happened, mm-hmm. and. Um, the Lord hasn't told me to do that. Um, it was bad. And what General McInerney said was right. And well, it's worse. It's worse. I don't know if General McInerney, I would assume General McInerney knows how much worse it is. It's just, yeah. It just rips your heart. I, I alluded to it yesterday, and then I know somebody else came behind the scenes and confirmed it to me um, yeah. afterwards, a, a, a former Navy SEAL um, well, and a Marine. That can you imagine going in with special forces into a C underscore A building and you're firing on your own troops? Five special forces were, were killed. This is General McInerney saying this. And we know one C underscore A was 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 killed. I just, yeah, I can't imagine. It makes me so mad. That's again where that justice side comes out where I just think I want someone to pay for all this evil that has and all the evil against Trump for the last four years. I just and, and that, I mean, that's just more of that, that um, deep, dark state that is uh, hopefully is running in, in, has hopefully their time is short, yeah. but they've sure done every 
evil they could possibly attempt to do. Although maybe, uh, who knows? I mean, maybe God ha- has held back some things they've attempted, but it didn't work. Um, well, I but, know he has. There's been what, um, I don't know if this is public information. Uh, I, somewhere of, I, I think I lost count at 27, at least 27 assassination attempts on President Trump. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, at the very beginning of his, of his term, I was praying for his protection all the time. And then I got this kind of feeling like he was so protected that it was almost like God was like, move on to other things. I got that one covered. Like, yeah, there's the enemy really is going to try to take him out and it absolutely will not be allowed. Right. And so I just kind of got this piece early on that he, the enemy would try to kill him and it was just not going to work, which. And that's, a, that's another tragedy of the church, because when you talk, talk about something like that, where what you're, you're explaining is literally a, a God sending his best top of the line angels to physically and literally surround and protect the president. So nothing gets to him. Yeah. And you say that to the normal church and they think you're back crazy. Uh, but yeah. that's exactly what happens. God yeah. battles them up. I, I had a prophetic word a week ago, I think. Uh, I may, Amanda may have been on. I don't remember who was on when I said this, but um, that Michael the Archangel was called into Washington D.C. a week ago. A week ago? Uh, I think it was a week ago. A week, a week ago, uh, two, a week ago or two weeks ago, I said that um, because the Lord told me Michael the Archangel was in Washington D.C. Okay, so on election night. I had a dream that Michael the Archangel came and stood next to me and I, I didn't see him. I just could see him like in my peripheral and he whispered something into my ear and I started getting like filled with this really intense joy. And then he went to Washington, DC. Really? And so, and I, I, I think I put that on, on Instagram too. Maybe I said it on YouTube, I, don't know, I can't remember what, where I do what, but um, I said, Michael the Archangel was just sent to deal with the battle uh, over the election. Yes. And, and then I, I, several other people since then I've heard, had heard the same thing. Yeah. So clearly lots of confirmation that Michael, which really normally he's involved with battles that regard are regarding Israel. Exactly. So at first I was a little confused. I'm like, why is he being sent to the United States? And I thought, well, but what happens here is going to affect Israel. Literally. Very, very much. Yeah. yeah. So because at the time that this happened, we, at the timing of this happened, we were in a, um, a covert situation with Iran. Um, and Iran is hoping that it would be Biden because they'll, they, they'll create a new Iranian deal. Uh, Israel is nervous because that happening. Uh, so there was talk that Israel would go and try to pro, uh, proactively bomb the uh, nuclear sites in Iran. Uh, and then they took out the head of their, uh, head of their nuclear science uh, a couple of days yeah. ago. Yeah. So that's why Michael the Archangel is there. Not just because we represent a beacon of hope of an eagle and, and the nation, and we pray for Israel, but this directly impacts Israel. Yeah. And God will not let it yeah, stand. Absolutely. Yeah, I was a little disappointed when Benjamin Netanyahu came out and, and congratulated uh, President-elect Biden when he used that term. I'm not using that term. Yeah. He used that term. I thought, really? <laughs> People have asked me about that. I believe Benjamin Netanyahu is, 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 is playing a Trojan horse. He's politically, he's politically smart, and if you follow where he went afterwards, you don't mm-hmm. say, welcome President-elect uh, Joe Biden, and then the next day you're literally negotiating a peace deal with Saudi Arabia and the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. That would be an yeah. awkward conversation. And I did have a prophetic word about, um, or a prophetic dream about Benjamin Netanyahu. You know, long story short, he went from stained to soap clean him up. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know if that's happened yet, but um, my first reaction when I heard about that with Benjamin Netanyahu was like, but then I realized that's just the way Benjamin Netanyahu is, because uh, he's got to yeah. be protective of Israel. Uh, everybody's yeah. against Israel. And um, but for to meet with Joe Biden and then have an assassination attempt or take out the head of the nuclear facility of Iran, that was a big deal. We got B-52s right now in um, Iran or in the Middle East. And I was told from one of my sources uh, last night, I don't think this has hit the news yet, which is surprisingly, that there was an attack in Haffa last night, and they think it was an Iranian attack. 
So things are at a high level with Iran like mm -hmm. uh, never before. And when President Trump says, when I become president or if I became president, he said, I guarantee you Iran will do a, a deal. He's not kidding. They'll be forced mm -hmm. to do a deal. Now we know that's a temporary deal because in Ezekiel 38 and 39, Persia is part of the coalition that comes against Israel. Yeah. But ex yeah. exciting times. I know you said you're doing, a, you're doing a study on Ezekiel, is that right? I'm doing it, yeah, we're in Ezekiel. It was funny you named your, your son Ezekiel. I love the name. Um, yeah. Right so, now, our Tuesday night is in Ezekiel, yeah. What chapter are you on? Uh, tonight is Ezekiel 21, I think. Okay. I never remember when, until I get it back into my Bible. Yeah, yeah. Um, when our son Ezekiel was, he, he wanted to pray in tongues and receive the, Holy, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He was, uh, I want to say maybe 10, I think. So anyway, um, we prayed for him and there was an older lady there and myself and my son. So we had prayed for him and he was like taken up and he, and he started saying, are we all inside of this wheel? Are we all in this wheel? And he started saying, he started without head knowledge of it. He started saying scripture from the book of Ezekiel. Wow. And he was like describing and we're looking at each other and she gets out her Bible and she's turning to that chapter. And he was describing literally what was in Ezekiel about the wheel, the, the wheel, the wheel, all that. The and he's like, are we all in this? Or is it just me? What are you in this? Are you guys in this? It was really cool. Cause he was, he was having a totally supernatural experience. So it was, he experienced the, the chair, the cherub, the, the wheel inside the cherub that they were moving yeah. in Ezekiel. That's that's yeah. wild that you said that because I don't want to go on a long tangent, but this is, shows our audience how real angels are, and they're all around us. And we don't worship angels. We worship the Lord above. I want to make that abundantly clear. But they're here to protect us. And they do, they do, um, they, they, they do, they're very curious of us because we go through so many battles that they don't have to go through battles. So they're, they're, they're very loyal. Um, I remember we were having a problem. With, <laughs> we were having an issue with my, my daughter. Uh, this is years ago. Uh, this is about five, six years ago. She was sneaking out. You know how girls sneak out when they're in high school? You didn't when you're in high school, but yeah. girl, girls would sneak out. D yeah. Dads don't like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, w I got a woke up by God one day, uh, and he said, she's sneaking out at 3 a.m. I said to my wife, I said, all right. God said, she's sneaking out at 3 a.m. So I said, well, you, you need to go up and watch, or I'll go up and watch. And so I think my wife took the watch that night. Sure enough, 3 a.m., she, she snuck out. And she says, how did you know I was going to sneak out? I've been able to sneak out all this time. She goes, Dad had a, uh, had a dream from God that you would try to sneak out. So she didn't get it yet. She tried it again, and, 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 and she got caught again. So I'm praying for her. Because, you know, she's a teenage girl and she's, she's thinking this dad's a little mixed up stuff and this mm -hmm. supernatural, I'm not sure about this. So I said, Lord, I pray that, and I, I did it for like a week, I pray that you send the biggest angel possible to go into her room. Mm -hmm. And he did. It, it might have taken three or four days of pr prayer, or a week of prayer, but he finally did. A 30-foot angel, she said, walked through her room gave her the comfort, she went right back to bed, went to sleep, and the angel passed, passed by. So she actually got to see it. She saw the angel. And wow. she told us the next morning at breakfast, and I was like, why didn't you wake us up? And she just said, I've never had so much peace before. But the, well, the reason I bring this up is that my son saw the same angel, my, my youngest son. It was behind, standing uh, behind my older son. And then we have somebody that's connected to our ministry that saw the same one. It was a 30-foot angel. I'm not sure if there was a sword, but there was the circle of Burl in the middle of it as well. All three of them confirmed the same looking angel. So my son calls those Noah angels. Really? And he's like, they're as tall as, as a house or you know, they're, you yeah, know, they're 30 foot. Little. Yeah. And he calls them Noah angels. I said, why do you call them Noah? He has little names for all kinds of demons and angels that he sees. He'll be like, oh, there's an egg angel or there's a lizard demon or whatever he has a thing and he's is he's describing just what he sees and so he puts the name on it based on you know what he sees but he was like maybe seven or so and he was talking about the noah angel 
that always is with him whenever he was outside playing or walking to school or whatever. I'm like, Noah, Angel, what do you mean by that? And he said, well, they're tall. They're as tall as buildings. They're so tall. They're, they're way, way taller than people. You can't even believe how tall they are. And I, he, he said they were around in the days of Noah. That's why I call them Noah angels. I'm like, how did you know that? And I don't remember what he said about how he knew, like, did the angel tell him that? Or did he just know that? I don't know. But he, he still calls them Noah angels. Is that the son that's named Ezekiel? Yeah. So uh, tell me how you named him Ezekiel. Well, um, I think really the Holy Spirit just wanted him named Ezekiel. I mean, it's kind of the bottom line. Uh, yeah. We we were looking at different names, and I believe it was my husband who just the Lord told him he's supposed to be called Ezekiel. And I was like, okay. There's it. there's so there's such power biblically in the name that God gives to the mother of of the child that's coming in. Um, the name um, Creed, our our son, that was given to me by my grandfather. Yeah, so I love that name. His, Creed, his name is Creed William, Creed William Scarlet. And um, I didn't make it up. Uh, my grandfather said that's his name. And uh, so we, we, we named him that. When I was, I, my name is David. And uh, big deal. You know, David's of the Bible. They, didn't have, they never put two and two together. Until about five years ago, I realized I'm from the tribe of Judah. I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm, I'm, I'm part Jewish. You are? Yes. <laughs> I didn't know that until about five years ago. And I'm it's jealous. from the tribe of Judah. So God literally named me after King David. Wow. Not that I'm going to be a king like King David. Um, it's yeah. just the names are so so powerful. They um, are. My name is Rachel, obviously, but I um, it means little lamb. Yeah. And I never liked that because I have kind of a strong personality. And I really thought I feel more like a lion than a lamb. And I didn't really want to be called the little lamb. I just always felt like it didn't match me. And then um, one year on my birthday, the Lord said, I have a birthday present for you. And I was like, mm, I'm so excited. I wonder what it is. You know? And then it was the day before my birthday that he said that. So then the next day I wake up and he said, do you want your birthday present? And I said, yes. And he said, your parents did not name you Rachel. I did. And so I said, okay. And he said, you've never liked your name because you've seen it as weak the little lamb, you know, like it's, it's actually means like a a baby, you, you know, and, um, and he said, but I named you after my own son. I named him the lamb and I named you the little lamb. I was trying to give you the highest compliment I could give you. You should love your name. Stop. It was like, it was a little bit of a rebuke, like stop not liking your name. I did this and it was, it was an honor and you need to stop it. Stop not liking your name. Wow. And from then on, I've, I've been like, my name is Rachel. It's yeah. little lamb. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've and, kind it's, of felt... and it's biblical too. Yeah. And it has a tie close to you. Remember Rachel law, uh, died in giving birth to Benjamin. Yeah, I know. I know. I thought that was a little interesting. Yes. So it's amazing how there is not just the name, but there mm-hmm. is patterns that God gives us of people from the Bible too. He's a God yeah. of patterns. And that's what I, I love yeah. about. And that's why I asked the Lord one day. I said, why didn't you ever tell me I was Jewish? I went through my whole life. He goes, he said, son, I wanted you to love the nation of Israel and my beloved Jerusalem as a Gentile before I would share that with you. Hmm. And it, was, it was fascinating. Um, but just the love, the love of Israel and the love of, of Jerusalem. God wants us to... Uh, hmm obey that because that's that's where he's going to put his peg and a yeah, lot of a lot of the church since i was little like have you ever been to israel no oh it so is sad. it's a game changer um mm-hmm. i was just when you brought that up i was thinking about when i was in bethlehem and rachel's tomb mm. it's just the, the the bible there's no place and i've when i was in the business world i traveled everywhere uh, there is no place in the world like Jerusalem or Israel. Just the, you know, God is God is with us everywhere we go. You feel the Spirit of the Lord. You feel the Holy Spirit. But there's something different about Jerusalem and all the mm-hmm. the, uh, the Sea of Galilee. Uh, his yeah. presence and just the Bible coming alive is just oh, yeah, it's amazing. I know. I heard. I I really want to go because. Uh. I've always, I've always just loved Jewish, like the Jewish and Hebrew world in general and the customs. And I've, I always loved the old Testament when I was growing up. Yep. Um, 
And I always like wished that I was Jewish and just really like loved and loved the Jews. Um, I, I think God really loves the Jews. Yes, he does. So. And, and, you know, he's dry bones, Ezekiel 37. Uh, that's before the Ezekiel 38, that the, the nation yeah. of Israel will, will, will go back. To, and we're seeing that. Uh, happening right before our very eyes with, with the, uh, everyone coming back uh, to the homeland uh, in Israel. It's just, it's a beautiful time to be alive. And we, we need to be prepared for that because uh, you don't want to, that was part of my testimony too. You don't want to go to heaven and say, my report card is empty. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's go time for God right now. And we have, to, we have to be prepared to do everything for his purpose and everything for his glory. Absolutely. It's amazing. I, yeah. And I don't want to miss a thing. Like I, I don't, I, at a young age really had this like fear of standing before God and him saying, I had so much more for you. Yeah. And I just, I don't know why, because I don't think that's normal. I don't, I don't, maybe someone said something to me. I don't know, but I just know from a young age, it was always like, I don't want to miss a thing. I don't want I don't want God to say, I had this other thing for you, but you just, you wouldn't, you wouldn't listen or you wouldn't obey, or you just didn't have eyes to see or whatever it would be. I always am like, Lord, give me eyes to see, give me courage, strength to obey. I don't want to miss a thing. Yeah. You want to hear, you want to, you want to hear those words. Well done, my faithful servant. Um, Yeah. There can't be a better compliment on the face of the earth than to go home to be with the Lord because you have an experience of it. I've had experience of it, and to tell people that love the Lord, heaven is real, and what God has in store for us is beyond anything you can imagine. It's worth the it's worth the battle. Yes. It's worth the battle every every step of the way. He is, he's, he's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't come up with words to say how great the great yep. I am that I am is. And uh, I agree. Can I ask you a question because of, of how you have? Um, I love how you connect things about the Holy Spirit and the Father and the kingdom of, of God with concrete stuff and yeah. military stuff and those two coming together. That's my favorite. And I'm like, you, like when you said, if I get spiritual and I get military, mm-hmm. I listen to the spiritual. I was just telling my dad, cause he was telling me about some experts that had recommended some certain things with finances. And I said, yeah, I don't really listen to experts anymore. I listen to prophets. They're yeah. just so much more reliable. And, or just my own self. Like, I'll just pray and ask God directly, you know, and, and get whatever he tells me to do. That's what I'm going to do. I'm not listening to the experts anymore because, because, you know, we've learned right. the better way. So, um, so I was wondering though, when you heard about the SEAL Team 6 stuff, or mm-hmm. I assume that you, you heard about that, do, did you know, had you already heard anything about that? Do you know if it's true? I mean, I know we were waiting for that confirmation and then that man never really. Oh, you mean with, with, yet, with Anna? You know, uh, yeah. Uh, we had Anna on to talk about that SEAL team. Uh, the, the, but you're talking about Benghazi, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then we had Charles Woods on who was in. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Um, I have real intel that confirms that is indeed true. Okay. But even better, I had a vision the day before Benghazi happened right in my front yard. And it happened and played out exactly the way it played out. Wow. I remember going to my wife, and my wife is kind of, when I tell her something now, she's like, mm, okay, it's going to happen, because it, it, it happens. Yeah. And it played out exactly. That was September 10th. It, it said uh, the vision was, uh, it was an attack on, I knew it was in the Middle East. I didn't know if it was specifically Benghazi. Uh, it was on fire. They were being killed. Um, uh, um, he took, everything was on fire. He took the American flag, and he ripped it right it, it was ripped perfectly in two, like a mm. knife, a, like scissors cut it perfectly. He said, this, wow. this country is going to be split in two. And that's where we're at today. We're split in two. And the mm. only way to redeem that is going to be through him. But he showed yeah. me Benghazi. So I knew Benghazi. And I've known for about three years that Benghazi is, uh, there was more to Benghazi, uh, the cover up. And I'm trying to think of Anna's story. Um, What she brought out with the whistleblower, uh, there's actually more to it that hasn't come out yet. I'm not sure if yep. he's going to bring that part out. But yeah. this, this, this Benghazi is just like everything else that's going on right now. It, it has tentacles to like 15 mm-hmm. other things that happen. Yeah. There's a chain, chain reaction. Um, yeah. 
But I never knew SEAL Team 6 was connected to uh, Benghazi until Anna broke the story. And then I was like, that makes sense because when SEAL Team 6 was taken out, I had an intel source say, that was no accident. That does not happen. So yeah. I, knew it was an, I knew it wasn't an accident, and I, right. but I didn't, you know, I didn't know for sure who did it. I had a hunch who, who would have done that, and, um, but that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. It's, it's, right. it's amazing because you get, you get all this, you, you get certain military intel you got to be very careful with because it may be, it may be 80% right, and you don't want to run with it because, you know, then they're going to say, oh, you got it wrong. We don't listen to man. We listen to God. Now I, when somebody says it's coming from the Lord, and I, I trust in the Holy Spirit's confirming that, it, it, that God is indeed, like he did with your picture coming to me and says, that's my daughter. You have her on. i like, okay. Um, I trust that 100% more than any best military intel because they're humans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're humans, and God is above that, and God is, uh, God is great, and he's protecting this great nation. He's going to give us one more chance for the greatest revival ever, and we got to be able to handle it. There's glorious times coming. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. I agree. I keep telling people, listen, if you're feeling down right now, borrow my hope, because I am so... Um, well, I'm an optimistic person anyway, but I am very optimistic about what we're getting ready to head into, like one of the best times we've ever had as a country, if not the best time. Um, it's going to be good. Yeah. It, not that it's not going to, not that there's not going to be hard things. There always will be, but that we are heading into a really, really good time. It's going to be beautiful. And you're going to be with us Saturday, right? Yes. I'm that, so excited. That is going to be a huge, huge event. I mean... Uh, our audience, there, there's going to be a lot of powerful prayer and prophetic. We're going to let the Lord run with it. Blow, Amanda's going to kick it off with a blowing of the shofar. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because I could sit with it for 6, 8, 10, 12 hours with other people that love Jesus as much as I love Jesus. And the time goes by like this. I'm looking at the clock. We went by an hour and a half that quick. Yeah. Yep, it's amazing. That's the Holy Spirit. And... Um, Oh, I am, I'm so thankful, Rachel, for you coming on, and I'm so thankful that um, I give glory to God that he connected you with us, and he's connecting you with us and connecting all of us because we are one body. He is the head, and we follow orders from our commander-in-chief, and that is Absolutely. our King of Kings and Lord of hosts. Anything you want to say in clothing, clo- uh, closing, and then if you would, it wouldn't mind closing us in prayer? Say in closing. Well, I've kind of been saying in closing what I just said about just being optimistic. I feel like this is not a time to to be down or you know to feel discouraged about the fact that like California, they just said we're probably going to lock you down again uh, in the next couple of days. Yeah, uh, and that kind of stuff, you know, that's happening. Just try to really rise above it. Uh, the enemy is kicking and screaming because he knows what's getting ready to happen. He's frantic. And, mm-hmm. He's frantic. So don't, don't, you know, just keep your eyes off of that. Lift your eyes up there. There's something coming. That's going to be really, really good. And if you don't have hope, borrow mine. <laughs> Amen. And th- that's why having you come on and it's so uplifting because it's just, it, we, there's so much power in the church sticking together and having that joy of the Lord. Before she came on, um, we did the Amy Coney Barrett note m- moment. I'll show the audience. My, my notes were empty. I did put today's day in the four pillars that you were talking about. But I'm sure your notes are the same. They're empty. We let the Holy Spirit just run, and um, it's all about the glory of God. Praise Absolutely. God. If- yes. Thank you so much. Well, shall I pray? Amen. Okay. So, Lord, I just thank you so much for my brother Dave. I thank you for his ministry and just the the way that he is hearing from you and is so submitted to you and the way that he is letting you lead his ministry and his family and his life. And, Lord, I just pray a special blessing over him and his wife and his children. Lord, I pray that, that you would prosper them in all their ways. I pray that you would... Um, provide so much blessing for them. They won't be able to contain it all and that they would be able to turn and be a blessing to others. Lord, I pray that, that Dave's ability to hear you would only increase and that he would know more and more and more. Lord, I pray that 
that you would give him favor, that you would draw the right people to him, that you would keep the wrong people away from him. I pray that he would be at the right place at the right time to meet the right people and just have lots of divine appointments. I pray that divine appointments would just be an absolute regular thing for him. And Lord, I just pray that you would protect his children. I pray that you would show yourself to all of his children and that his children would would just be passionately in love with you and that they would pick godly spouses and that they would um, all continue on in this uh, this rich legacy that, that he has started. And Lord, I just pray your, your blessing over his ministry. I pray that it would grow and grow and grow and be highly effective. I pray that that um, you would draw people to tune in who, who need to hear the messages that he's releasing and, and that just much good fruit would come from the work that he's doing. And Lord, we thank you so much for President Trump. And, and Lord, as I've said, I just, I'm gonna ask and I'm gonna keep on asking like that persistent widow, Lord, that your good, perfect and pleasing will will be done for President Trump and his family and his presidency and his second term and our country. Lord, we just ask that every single thing that needs to be exposed in this election process will be exposed in Jesus name. And I pray that all the concrete proof that is needed to, to overturn and to, to have the election go the way you want it to go. I pray all that concrete proof would come out, would come into light, would get into the right hands and that those people would be protected. I pray for all the whistleblowers to be protected. I pray for the, all the attorneys and um, for Sidney Powell and and um, General Flynn and, and Rudy Giuliani and Jenna Ellis and um, I feel like I'm forgetting people, but the, all of the team Lord, that is working, um, Jay Seculo and, and others, Lord, I just pray your special protection over them. I pray that you would give them br just the brilliance uh, uh, that is only from you. I pray that you'd give them the wisdom of Solomon, that they would know exactly how to proceed to win in a landslide in the courts and in all the situations that they are dealing with within each state. Lord, we just ask that, that this would just go exactly how you want it to go. In Jesus' name, we say yes and amen to your plans for our country. We say yes and amen to revival, Lord. I pray that you would continue to just prepare the hearts of the people all over the, not just the United States, but all over the world. Or just, um, I pray that the circumstances would be set up just so, so that they would, the, the stage would be set for them to know they need you to come from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And that we would see the, the biggest revival the world has ever seen in, in this next coming year. And Lord, we just pray that, um, that you would continue to work out all things that that not just in our our elections and in the government lord but we pray that that all positions of leadership would would be filled with people that that have your heart i pray that you would remove ungodly pastors and and people who are not truly shepherds lord i pray that that they would be removed from leadership positions and pastoral positions and that that the the men and women who truly have your heart would be put into those positions and and that they would lead people well and I pray for businesses and the educational system and um, in Hollywood and in media, Lord, clean house or just clean house. Have your way in all of the seven mountains, Lord, have your way. And Lord, we just, we love you. We're so grateful for everything you're doing. We're so grateful that you speak to us. Lord, we're just, that's just, just, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that you speak to Dave. You speak to Amanda, that, 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 you're, that you give us ears to hear and that, that, that even though you're the creator of the whole world, that you speak to us. That's amazing. Lord, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for the ways that you've shown yourself to us, the way that you're leading us. Lord, I pray that, that we would continue to hear your voice and, and be led by you and, and that we would continue to choose humility, that we could continue to be used by you in a a way that, that you are honored and glorified and and um, in a way that is just pleasing to you. And Lord, we just thank you for this time, for this last hour and a half or however long it's been to, to speak with Dave and I together. It's just been such a blessing, Lord. I thank you for setting this up. I thank you for showing us both that this was supposed to happen. It's been such a blessing to me. And I just thank you for that. And I, I just 
just ask that as we go out into the rest of our day that you would continue to just provide and lead and take care of us and protect us. And we ask all of these things in the most high name in the whole world, Jesus. Amen. Amen. That was that was absolutely incredibly powerful. Um, Satan is miserably panicked now because now uh, God has united us together. And that's just another one to come into the kingdom of glory, to give him glory. And we're multiplying. We're multiplying. He doesn't like that. <laughs> God bless you so much for coming on. It is. It feels like I've known you forever, and um, same. I, I I know this is just the beginning of what God has in store for the both of us. Mm -hmm. God bless you and your family, and um, I know we'll we'll be talking again on Saturday. Yes. Yes. Perfect. I look forward I to it. All right. God bless you. God bless you, Dave. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Wow, that was a uh, incredible interview. Um, just the Spirit of the Lord really, really moving. I'm excited to, that the Lord has done that. As I said, uh, it was the, the Lord put that on my heart. Uh, the Holy Spirit did, and Anna Kate uh, confirmed it too. So um, uh, we want to just give a quick update on the rest of the week. Tomorrow is uh, Wednesday. Tomorrow we'll have Denise Edwards on. Thursday we'll have Jim Stocksdale on. Friday, we're going to go later on Friday. We're going to go at 4 Eastern on Friday. That's just a little curveball. Amanda Grace will be back on. Uh, the following week, we have Pastor Greg Locke on December 9th. We have Jonah Ritter on December 10th to talk about Hanukkah. We're going to go deep into Hanukkah. I look forward to that. December 16th, uh, I just got confirmation back. Lance Walno will be with us. And Dr. Graves, the Holy Spirit was moving with us. Uh, we played uh, text back. We're going to have Dr. Graves hopefully back next week. Uh, and then fr Saturday, December 5th from 6 to 12, Slaying the Bale Prophets. Christopher McDonald, Anna Kate, Dr. Graves, Rachel, Rachel, who was on, Rachel Hamm, Jim Stocksdale, Denise Edwards, and Kelly Marie. It is going to be incredible. Go in the shalom of the Most High God. God bless you all. Obey's extreme terpenes incorporate all the vital components of the industrial hemp plant by sourcing organic ingredients from the flowers, seeds, and stalks of these God-given plants. All of our products meet or exceed the 2018 U.S. Farm Bill requirements. Obey is leading the way in restoring past remedies for essential solutions with clean and simple, natural, organic, healthy choices. Thank you for your support as it helps fund many of the His Glory Ministries Benevolence Projects. Hebrews Coffee by His Glory, providing you with the best tasting coffee on the planet.